Now let's talk about Peter. Peter, on the other hand, is rescued. Peter gets arrested, first of all. Let's not skip that. It's not a fun arrest. When we think arrest, oh, they put the cuffs on him and led him to the car and drove him to the cell. Mm, this was back in the day. He already got flogged for preaching. He already got, the, Peter, they weren't handling him nicely, I'm sure. Arrest and prison is not the same as it is in this century. This is way back. There were no cameras on, on the guards, so they could say that there was some brutality happening. They didn't care. They were treating them how they were gonna treat them. Peter gets arrested, sees and knows, I think he knows that James has been killed because we see that he tells the, the disciples later, tell James and the crew. I don't know if that's the same James or not. I'd have to study on that. But tell James and them uh, about what I've talked about. So Peter knows that he's been arrested. He's been delivered a couple times. God has rescued him before, but he has no knowledge that he's going to get out of this. He submits to the arresting and is imprisoned. And this is Herod's plan to bring him out and possibly kill him next to see what the people will do. That's what the Bible says. It says that he's going to keep him around Passover. So to bring him out, to see what he's going to do out to the people later. That's what it said in verse four at the end. He's going to bring Peter out later. That's his plan. And then it says, now when Herod was about to bring, verse six, him out on that very night, Peter was sleeping. Do you see what Peter is doing? Oh, God is good. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this revelation here. Peter, <coughs> Peter is sleeping. Peter is under attack from an abusive, a, a power hungry, bad decision making government official who for all intents and purposes has this man's life in his hands. But Peter is doing what? Sleeping, resting. Ooh, Peter is resting. He's sleeping good. How I know he's sleeping good because the angel is sent to rescue him and angel and Peter wasn't up like, Whoo, I'm so glad you're here. I was worried. He was almost going to, I'm pretty sure it was time for me to come out and I don't know because James just got it. I just don't know what's going to happen. I didn't know if you were going to come through. Peter wasn't in there punching guards. He wasn't, he wasn't staging an upright. He wasn't staging a revolution. Do you want a revolution? He didn't turn into Kirk Franklin up in there. He wasn't in the guard's face. Some of us want a revolution. He wasn't pulling the, the criminals together, make sure that they all saved. And you know, we're coming. We got to bring the kingdom here. We can't have this happening here. Here it is a crooked and mean and ungodly. Mm. He's an ungodly presence, and we got to do what's necessary to bring the kingdom. That, that, does it say Peter was doing that? That's what Peter was doing the first time when Jesus was getting arrested. I think something has occurred that he understands that has, has accepted the mission like Jesus had, that no man takes my life. He starts to understand that no man takes my life, but I'm on a mission, and if I'm on mission, God is going to do what he's going to do. He will bring it to completion. I trust him. He is asleep. He is resting so much that the angel has to, has to strike him to wake him up. He had to nudge him. Hey, get up, dude. I'm freeing you. And then Peter is so sleep, so good. You ever been so sleep and so, you've been sleep so good that you wake up and you don't even remember if it was real or not. You woke up, went to the bathroom and stuff. You wake up all frantic like, oh snap, I went to the bathroom in my sleep. I remember that dream, not realizing it was real. This man is freed from prison in his dream. You not only woke him up, but then the chains fell off. Somebody say miracles, signs and wonders. This is not logical stuff. The angel shows up, chains fall off, says, follow me, Peter, thinks he's seeing a vision, yet he's still obeying. He's obeying as he's resting. He's resting and he gets called and he's obeying and following. And then doors are opening for him. 
I'm not going there. I'm just saying that, do you see, I'm, I'm describing what the Bible says. This, this is miraculous. Why am I pointing this out? Because your God, my God, that we say we believe in, has power to save and to rescue, to deliver, to do great and mighty things. This same God who sent an angel to rescue him, calls chains fall off to fall off, lead him down the street in the middle of the night, calls doors to open and then disappear and take him to where he was supposed to be. Is that God not able to take care of Herod? Is that God not able to handle the crooked, the corrupt, the evil, the wicked? Whatever adjective you want to put in front of that elected official that you've been feeling some kind of way about that you feel like you need to do something about. Did you even pray about what you're doing? If you did, even if you did, you need to pray and let God be God. That's what this is about. We have to realize that God is in control. Peter was resting, resting. Let's bring that out. Church, people of God here in America and abroad, no matter what's going on out there, no matter what the authorities, I do the quote unquote, quote unquote, quote, because there are authorities who seem to be in power. You know what Pontius Pilate said to Jesus? Do you not realize I have your life in my hands pretty much? And Jesus said, you only have the power that we give you, bro, that I give you. That's all you got. He understood something. Don't allow the, the narrative in this, this, this flesh suit, being a human, get us to forget that these people in power are only empowered by the one who is in power and all powerful. Our God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, far above all we ask, think, or imagine. Why do we think that it all lays on our shoulders to do something, to defend God? If he didn't call you to do it, some of us need to be lobbying. Some of us need to be that front and that one who holds the government accountable. God has anointed and appointed some, I wouldn't say that slow, some, not all. That's not what we're all supposed to be doing. And even if you are called to do it, let us do it prayerfully. Whatever he's called to us to do, he's not called any Christians to sit down and not do anything. Don't get it twisted. So for the lazy Christians that just want to allow whatever case sarah, sarah, that's not what I'm preaching. That's not what the word preaches. Resting in the Lord is, is an act of obedience. It's, a, it's an act of obedience to rest and to trust in him. I'm going to pray about it and I'm going to sleep. I'm going to pray about it and I'm going to vote. I'm going to pray about it and I'm going to talk to my neighbor. I'm going to pray about it and I'm going to pray for that wayward son. I'm going to pray for that wayward daughter. I'm going to pray for my neighbor who seems to be an atheist and so far from Christianity. I'm going to pray for those kids in that other country, not because I got to do it. I have to manipulate and no, my God is sovereign and I know he's big and he's great and he can do it. But even if he doesn't, my faith is still in him. I'm going to go to sleep. I'm going to do my part of the partnership, which is to trust him and to pray. And I'm going to let him handle the healing. If it happens, if it doesn't, that's his. He's sovereign. I'm going to pray and pray that they don't die. But God is sovereign. And if his plan is for them to die, then they die. But he still gets the glory. I know easier said than done, but it's the truth. Whether it's James or whether it's Peter, God is the God who's in control. And he sometimes allows Herod to wreak havoc. And yet he causes the church to grow. Let us not get in the way of what God is doing. Let us be prayerful knowing that God is able to deliver, to rescue with power in his hands, like he did for Peter. Yet also remember that he's sovereign to allow James to die. And we must be obedient and trust that God knows what he's doing.
Amen. Amen.